Welcome, 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 welcome to our week 11. I can't believe it's week 11, but it is. And, and this is an episode of the Maternity and Midwifery Hour. And our theme today is Voices from Student Midwives During the COVID-19 Crisis. My name's Sue MacDonald and I'll be with you for the hour. I'm the curator of the Maternity and Midwifery Festivals and these hours, I have that, that pleasure, it's great fun, a little bit of work for us. Um, and these sessions were designed to provide some continue, continuous professional development for midwives and for others who are in the maternity services, including student midwives, and also to, to kind of raise awareness of some of the issues that are under discussion at the moment. And I'd like at this point to say a huge thanks to Matflix, um, which is our video streaming from the maternity experts who do the CPD and revalidation packages. And this is a fantastic resource for midwives and for student midwives and for people who are just interested in maternity services. Um, so, as I said, tonight we're looking at experiences of student midwives in the UK and Ireland during the last few weeks of the COVID-19 crisis. And I'm delighted to be joined this evening, rejoined by Alicia Shirley Burnett, who's a third year student midwife. She's also a co-editor of the Student Midwife Journal in her spare time, whatever that is. And Laura Henry, who's a third year student midwife in the Republic of Ireland, and is also a busy activist, both of whom of these uh, participants are tweeters and bloggers, but very busy in their other life. And I just thought we usually start with a little moment of the week just to sort of start things off. And, and Alicia, I was wondering if you had a moment of the week yourself. Good evening, everybody. It's lovely to be back again. Um, my moment of the week this week was um, returning to practice. I've been out of practice for around 10 weeks now due to having to opt out. And it's been lovely to rejoin my mentors and my fellow student midwives on the front line, as they say. Fabulous. Thank you. And you look good on it, Alicia. <laughs> How about Laura? Well, do you have a moment of the week? Definitely. Um, I am not a third year student midwife anymore. I am a fourth year student midwife. I passed ah. all my exams yesterday, so that was, that was definitely my moment. Fabulous. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you very much to both of you for being here. I know it's going to be a really good week this week. Okay. And, and also, I'd like to just use, do the usual. And um, thoughts for people who have been affected by COVID, the people who might have people who are sick, who have lost loved ones or friends or relatives, and I'd just like to say we're with you at this point. And also thank you to all those in the NHS who are working so hard to care for everybody, include and keeping the services going, because mostly in maternity services it's keeping everything going. You can't close down elective services because Mothers and babies still need the care. Babies still arrive and still need the, the care of it for those babies. And thank you also to all the key workers. Everybody who keeps things going in the country um, at this time is hard work for everybody, I think. Different, difficult times, different times. Okay, I do have some little snippets of news. And of course, the big news at the moment is the uh, the trials of dexamethasone and th this will be a familiar drug to midwives because it's something we've, we've used for a long 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 time even since I was a student midwife which is a long time ago uh, for, for helping babies lungs mature little preterm babies and that that's being found to be very effective at treating COVID-19 so it's very exciting um, to see there's something that, that is actually can help so much. Uh, another piece of news is Public Health England COVID-19, understanding the impact on BAME communities, which was published yesterday. Here yeah, it is, hot off the press. And it's got a series of recommendations. I would commend it to you to have a really good read of it. It's a really important document. Uh, and that's on the resources page that you can get alongside this, um, this, this, this uh, hour's session. Uh, it's also, i just like to say, it's Cancer and Pregnancy Awareness Week this week. So I'm making a little call out for Mummy Star, who's done so much to support women and families through cancer during pregnancy. 
and afterwards. And they have some very good resources on Twitter and Facebook and obviously their own web page. Um, and just one quote that hit me this morning was, I was so glad to find Mummy Star, I didn't feel so alone anymore. And I think that's especially important at the moment because a lot of people are feeling alone or lonely at the moment because they haven't got their usual network arrangement. So I think that's important. And the other good thing is that more vulnerable kids are going to continue to get food vouchers over the summer called for by Marcus Rashford, a young man, a footballer who's, who really raised, um, raised the game on this and, and changed the government direction, which was fantastic for kids. So that's the little snippets of news, and I'm now going to move to the main event, and we're, re we're revisiting to a certain extent because we did have some discussions a few weeks back on students' experience and what had to be set up for students. So we thought it was would be good to revisit and see how things were for student midwives. So I'm really thrilled that, to have Alicia Burnett back who's our third year student midwife. She's at the University of West London. She's a co-editor of the Student Midwife Journal and curator of the COVID-19 cohorts blog, which she'll, I'm sure she's going to tell you all about. She's also a prolific tweeter and blogger, and she's a really, truly a modern influencer and someone we really want to listen to. So welcome, Alicia. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just say good evening to everyone again. And um, brief disclaimer, I got fancy this time and I've got videos embedded in my presentation. So um, please be patient. Okay, so the topic of my presentation this evening is voices from student midwives during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, I've done a lot of talking in the past couple of weeks. I really wanted to use this opportunity to give other students' voices a platform. And this is um, Daniela, she's in my um, practical, she's in my clinical practice area. This is the lovely Hawa. This is the lovely Rian. She was in my previous cohort. She's now a newly qualified midwife. And that's me wearing my PPE. Ooh. Okay, just a brief summary of what I'm going to touch on in this presentation. So I'm just going to talk a bit more about um, the COVID-19 cohorts blog and just summarize a few of the findings that have drawn out from my, um, from my work on this. And I thought it would be nice to show how students are doing now. So for example, here's Hawa. She actually submitted um, a, a blog for the COVID-19 cohorts blog. And I revisited, um, I've, I spoke to Hawa just yesterday actually to find out how she's doing now. So we're going to be reflecting on that. I'm going to highlight a few um, support um, resources for students, and we're going to end with a special message from a very special someone. Okay, so what is the COVID-19 cohorts blog? Okay, so um, I started a project while I had to opt out. Um, I had quite mixed feelings about having to opt out. I felt quite guilty. But um, my time at home led me to reflect on how other students may be feeling at this time. So I started this blog. So um, what it is, is a blog that features reflections written by student midwives from all over the world. And it documents their experiences of being a student midwife during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the countries that are featured in the blog include Iran, England, Greece, Uganda, USA, Rwanda and the Republic of Ireland. This is just an excerpt from um, Osama's blog. He's a student midwife in Uganda. So what he had to say was, um, only two weeks into my long anticipated hospital placement, I received the shocking news about the immediate closure of all university programs. Withdrawing from my clinical practice has caused me a lot of anxiety as I'm not certain that extended clinical placements will be arranged to replace the previously disrupted ones. I was so pleased to be able to reach out to um, uh, a Ugandan student midwife because it it's very easy to get wrapped up in your own personal experience and I think it's very important for us to always reflect on the experiences of others okay moving on this is um how I wrote a poem she wrote a really beautiful poem and an excerpt from Howard's poem was I bought books I bought pens I bought shoes for placement excited and elated I waited to start and then they announced it. They shut the schools down 
and now we're held hostage, confined to our homes. I found Hawa's poem to be really touching and really powerful, and I was really, really pleased that she submitted it. Thank you, Hawa. This is a student midwife in um, America, New York to be specific. Um, we heard a lot about the pandemic in America, um, around the, the uh, different states, so it was nice to um, get the feedback of a student that's practices there. Suddenly, what had felt like a supported and progressing early labour came to a complete stop. We were all required to quarantine at home, and within days, the once bustling and turbulent city fell quiet. New York has quickly become a, wide, a worldwide epicentre, and our hospital system and providers have appeared to drown in the never-ending sea of patients. And our last quote comes from Jenna. Um, she, the title of Jenna's blog piece was The Year the, Word, the World Stood Still. Jenna had been anticipating qualifying in September 2020. She was really looking forward to it, submitting her dissertation, applying for jobs, and then the pandemic hit. So Jenna had this to say. Overnight, I was not only studying for a degree, but now I had the daunting task of homeschooling my two children, and my husband's workplace had to figure out how they were going to keep their business running. The biggest question I have now is when will I qualify? I feel like these um, examples that I provided from the blog, I feel that a lot of you out there will, um, that will resonate with a lot of you. But I didn't want to leave it on a sour note. So this is the feedback that I've gotten from students quite recently this week. So Yusama says, I have now opted into a voluntary, a voluntary hospital placement. I am still not certain of when I'll resume school. This is week three of my practice. I spent the first two weeks working on the postnatal ward. I am currently in the labour suite. I am really getting good opportunities to practice and learn. I feel so proud that I have supported three mothers to birth their babies. And here's the lovely Hawa. What a difference 10 weeks can make. I have made the new normal work for me. I am really looking forward to face-to-face -face sessions, but the overthinker in me is now anxious of how she will readjust back to the old way of working once the world has healed. I think we can all relate to how his feelings of anxiety, if we have opted out big there, I have to admit myself, I was anxious about returning to practice. Jenna, Jenna was so gracious. She was gracious enough to send me a whole paragraph. Here we go. Placement is very different. It has taken time to get my head around how contact with women has changed during the antenatal period. And it still feels strange consulting with women over the telephone. The midwives I work with have been very supportive of my new role within the trust and were happy to see us back. PPE is uncomfortable and it has taken away that sense of being able to build a rapport and bond with women on a more personal level. It's hard to reassure women when there is a physical barrier between us. I feel that my communication skills have improved greatly though, as a result. Jenna's got a job as well. She, she, throughout all of this, Jenna managed to interview for a job and she got the job of her dreams. Preparing for interviews was at times difficult as I was applying while writing my dissertation. Hearing back from employers seemed to take a long time due to staff levels at the trust. Interviewing over a computer screen was also odd, but receiving that phone call offering me my dream job at my first choice trust was the best day. I'm excited to have the opportunity to finish my degree on time, start my job in October and begin this new chapter in my life. I want to thank all of the contributors to my presentation tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Your input has been so valuable. Now, I managed to get these two lovely ladies to submit um, video testimonials of how they're doing now. And fingers crossed, there'll be no technical glitches. This first video is a bit quiet at the beginning, but it does pick up. challenges of COVID-19 was organizing childcare for when I returned back to clinical practice. Prior to COVID-19, I had access to a variety of childcare providers, which after the virus were no longer accessible to me. 
So therefore, when I knew I would be returning to clinical practice, I contacted my university and my clinical placement CPFs. They were extremely supportive with my difficulties. They organised my rota so that I was able to continue attending placement around my available childcare and therefore I have continued my training and continued my learning. Okay, and we're going to hear from Trisha now, hopefully. Hi, I'm Trisha, first year student midwife. I'm coping really well right now through a series of trial and error in terms of when I'm going to be studying and things like that. I found that waking up early to study really helps me as the rest of the family are asleep and that gives me time to just be my be by myself and focus as I was a student who really liked going to the library to work and I can't really do that at the moment. Um, I, as a first year, I have been taken out of placement, but I'm grateful for it because it's enabled me to focus more on the academic side of things, completing my assignments, doing up doing more reading so that has really helped me but i am excited to go back to placement soon okie doke um a point i would like to make is that whilst all of this has been very difficult we as student midwives have shown ourselves to be extremely resourceful and adaptable and creative as my next video will show oops oh no 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 <laughs> Oh Hi, I'm Trisha. Apologies, I'm so sorry. There we go, yes. Okay, so this is Anytime. Um, due to the cessation of face-to-face -face teaching, student, student midwives and our lecturers have had to become quite creative. So, for example, Anytime had to record her OSCE and send it to her lecturers um, as a video. So um, just check out this snippet from her breastfeeding OSCE. Um, Enitan has also contributed to the COVID-19 cohorts blog and her blog was called Words of Wisdom. So guys, I'm just going to talk a bit about breastfeeding and there are so many benefits to breastfeeding. Disclaimer, I understand that not everyone can breastfeed and some people do have problems and difficulties with breastfeeding. Some have tried and, you know, stopped along the way, etc. But that's fine. We're just here to talk about some of the benefits anyway, right? Okay, like, I'm going to try and move to the next slide without it playing again. So guys, I'm just going to talk a bit about breast. Come on. There we go. Excellent. Fantastic. Okay, so now I'm just going to highlight a few resources that um, I found personally quite um, beneficial to my learning since face-to-face -face teaching has stopped. And I just wanted to highlight them to you. So the, the COVID-19 cohorts blog is hosted on a website called All for Maternity. Um, so this here on the side is just like a little step-by-step -step guide to find to show you how to find the um, COVID-19 cohorts blog and I want to let you all know that it's still open for submissions. Um, all for Maternity has also provided study sheets so you read an article watch a video and then there are activities for you to complete and just to let you know that there is currently a 50% um, discount on annual subscriptions so you would get the Practicing Midwife, the Student Midwife Journal, lots and lots of e-learning modules and access to all of the blogs. This I wanted to highlight to you because this is um, a piece written by a midwife and it's on the author maternity platform now. It's an open access um, article. During COVID, I'm sure you have found that Normal birth has somewhat taken a back step due to um, increased PPE, for example, that's an intervention, not allowed to, no visitors, that's an intervention. Um, no, sometimes your birth partner can't even be with you at the time. And um, just this article will give you ways to support women to achieve normal outcomes, have a normal birth experience, just to encourage you and to to show you ways that you can enhance the birth experience regardless of what's going on because despite the pandemic babies are still going to be born and women still need you so this is an article that will support you to provide the care that you really want to give in, in spite of the pandemic 
Aha. Okie doke. So this is the July issue of the Student Midwife Journal. This issue, all of our issues are for you, but this issue in particular, it's our love letter to you, to your efforts throughout this pandemic. As student midwives, you have stood and you have protected. You have protected the legacy of midwifery. You have protected women. You have protected babies. You have protected each other. You have protected your mentors. This, these images, these people on this cover, they are you. And I hope that you see yourself reflected in this cover. Okay, just a few more um, resources for student midwives at this time. Really important ones, actually. Health Education England. Um, there are a lot of resources on their uh, COVID-19 page. They have a dedicated web page for it, which will be linked in the resources that you'll get after this. There's e-learning. This student midwife case study, that's me again. Um, but I recorded a video and at the end of the video, there's a special message for all of you student midwives. I'm really, really proud to be one of you. You're just so impressive and I want the world to know. I would scream it from like, the rooftops if I could. And other sources of support for you are your lecturers, the Student Union Wellbeing Team. From September, um, students are able to get the five grand um, learning support fund. I think applications open on the 1st of July. So please follow this account on Twitter. Of course, student finance can give you some advice as can the RCM and the NMC. Okay, another video. This one is from the lovely Sheena Byram, just for you. Hi everyone, it's Sheena Byram here. I just wanted to send a special message to all the student midwives out there. All of you who've had your practice placements disrupted and your study disrupted. I mean, it's just not what you expected at all. And whilst it's changed all our lives, this pandemic, for you, it's been particularly enormous. And I want to send my congratulations to you for, for being so resilient during this time. And, do you know, I think that you're the special ones because you've kind of been tested to the nth degree. And I know that when you go out there to be midwives, finally, you'll have something else, something that we are, we'll never have had. So um, just good luck and thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've done because I know that you're gonna make a massive difference when you do finally qualify. Okay, this is probably going to play again when I press this. Yep. Hi, there we go. <laughs> okay, please take out your phones or if you're on your laptop, please take a screenshot of this slide. These are all fantastic accounts to follow. The entire um, Student Midwife Journal editorial board is on the Instagram list. And some of us are also on the Twitter list. That's me. Ooh. That's fabulous. Thank you, Alicia. And finishing off with all those resources, people are going to be getting their phones. <laughs> and I hope I hope they'll have time where you can re revisit this um, presentation after the event to hear all this again, if you'd like to, and to be able to get all the links from Alicia, because there's some really useful uh, resources there as people and websites as well. That's absolutely fantastic. And, and really interesting because I think, and, and I, I would concur with what Sheena said, because you are the special ones because you've had to be resilient. You've had to work with the difficulties that COVID has brought along. Um, just as the mothers and babies are, are the kind of special ones too, because they've had to do the same. So there's a lot of co-learning, which is absolutely fabulous. And it's lovely to see. So thank you for that. I'm sure we're going to come back to you, Alicia, because there's going to be some questions coming in for our question bit. But I shall move along for, to Laura Henry, who's sitting there in the, in the eaves there. She is a fourth year student midwife in the Republic of Ireland. And, and she's a student committee member with the Midwives Association of Ireland and a student representative of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Association. She's passionate, as you'll see, about helping aspiring and student midwives through their journey after trying multiple entry pathways over the years herself. She's very much an activist and an advocate, like every midwife should be. And she's interested in empowering midwives to be activists in small, everyday ways. I'm looking forward to your presentation, Laura. The floor is yours. 
Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me. Hello to everyone. And just a very special thank you to Alicia for asking me out of the blue to do this. Um, I have to say, I've never seen anyone hold up other student voices or anyone's voices in the way that you do. Um, so thank you. And um, so I'm going to try and share my screen now. Uh, just bear with me. That should be it there. I think we have it. Um, so I'll just start into it. Um, so yes, I realise that the fourth year student midwife is probably a very confusing concept to anyone in the UK. Um, so I'm going to run through the training and service provision that we have in Ireland because it is slightly different. Um, so I am in my final year of the undergraduate programme. It's a four year programme because we have longer breaks and something called an internship, which is like the professorship. Um, we only have one intake of students and it's all based on academic entry. We don't have personal statements or interviews or anything like that, so it's fully on your exam. And at the end of that, we have a 36-week um, internship, which is paid. It is a contracted thing, so you're an employee. And um, the way my college structures it is that we do three months in each hospital within our area. So I'll do three months of antenatal in one place and three months of postnatal in another, and three months of labour ward in another. Um, and other than that, we have the 18-month postgrad, which is, it seems, exactly similar to what you have in the UK. Um, and then our service provision is a little bit different as well. So we have 19 units in the Republic of Ireland in total, and they're all obstetric-led. We have variations of midwifery-led service throughout that. So we have two midwifery-led units, which are alongside units. We nearly lost one of them at the start of the month, but um, we managed to save it. And we also have integrated community services, which are like a blend of midwifery-led, early transfer home and domino service. And then we have domino service and early transfer home as well. And we have home birth out of two of our hospitals and through independent midwives, Self, we call them self-employed community midwives and then through private midwifery as well and I just put this quote in the middle because I found it while I was looking for the accurate information for this <laughs> um, and it's from our regulators website it was just on a recruitment page but I thought it was a really perfect summing up of what's going on at the minute um, what's always going on in midwifery but especially at the minute we're helping families and parents at a critical time and there's no more critical time than pregnancy and especially pregnancy in a pandemic and then I just really love the image underneath I have no idea who the original artist is but it's just a really nice image of the privilege of the job we have um, so then from that um not the way things normally are um, to this, a change of course. Um, when the colleges closed in Ireland on the 12th of March, I was four days back from an 18-week placement block, so I was delighted to have my placement out of the way. Um, but like everyone else, it was a total upheaval. Um, nobody knew what was happening, nobody knew what was going to happen, and we just had to go home and kind of tip away at work and see what, what happened. Um, so I spent the first two weeks in my student accommodation waiting for news. And then news came and I moved home two months early. <laughs> um, so everyone just had to adjust. Um, online learning became our new normal. And I have to say, I feel so lucky to have the lecturers that I have because they were great. They communicated with us, they asked us what we needed, and I think that's really important at any time, but especially now, um, to see what's needed and to communicate and you know how important that is in practice. Um, and then, so I had, I had finished my placement and I was delighted to have finished my placement, but our first year and second year students were on placement or were due to go out. And that was prevented. In Ireland, we don't have an opt-in system. Um, so students didn't really have like the same way of completing their hours. We were given, 
it's kind of like a HCA deal, a healthcare assistant option. You could go and work for a, a hospital group as, as a healthcare assistant and see if your hours would be able to carry over. But that's quite difficult in maternity with so few maternity care assistant positions. Um, so like I said, we have interns and they are paid employees while being students. So they were expected to turn up. Um, and interns are paid minimum wage. So we did, our INMO, our union got a deal, I think, for maybe a four euro pay increase. And that is still in place, I, I believe. Um, but yeah, we had no option. So I think there's a lot of people out there waiting for their hours to, to be confirmed or what's going to happen. So this is just a little, it will be okay. <laughs> it will get done. The hours will be done. It will be fine. Um, there will always be a way forward. They're not going to let you go with no answers. Um, so another nice thing to kind of sandwich that badness in is that our 2020 graduates will all have jobs. They've all been promised jobs um, by the government. And as far as I know, they all are, have been offered posts already. Um, I hope not. But that was just a, a nice way of really recognizing how much they were they were putting in um, as students because there's a little bit of a blurred line in internship you're not sure whether you're a student or an employee but you're both and I think that makes interns especially brilliant especially now <laughs> um, and then services as well it's, I'm sure some of the same things happened in the UK uh, services had to adjust really quickly and I think um Oh, her name escapes me. The birthright, the woman from birthright two weeks ago on midwifery hour was talking about making decisions in proportion to risk and right. Um, and we we just don't know until after if it was the right decision. Um, but um, we've had things like people not being able to use Entenox because people thought it might because midwives and doctors thought it might be a an aerosolizing procedure. Um, we have a hospital that wasn't allowing partners in at all and then kind of loosened it to 30 minutes before baby was born, which is a bit of a tricky measurement. But um, it's just kind of testing the waters, seeing what's safe and seeing what's the least bad option. Um, and then the flip side of that is that we've had really lovely things like Nick used um, live streaming to parents from iPads. We had a massive amount of donations to the different units. So um, there's pictures appearing online of babies with little signs saying, I, I drank this much today or I gained a pound and nice little things like that to keep people connected, um, which was lovely. And yeah, so it was just to echo with what Alicia said, pregnancies always normal it's probably it's most normal in a pandemic um <laughs> the most normal thing that could happen and i think something that was tricky to remember is that it can be really overwhelming for any midwife but especially a student midwife or an intern midwife to be able to provide that, that normal in a pandemic when we are in ppe that's uncomfortable and we don't know who Every, you have to standard precautions except that everyone is suspected COVID and that's stressful and I think it was really wonderful for something like midwifery hour to appear because I know when I moved home from college that midwifery hour appeared and I was like oh something to keep me connected something to keep me in tune with what's going on in midwifery and then the COVID cohorts as well to see that other students were doing the same sitting at home waiting, wondering, <laughs> um, but remembering as well to look out for each other and to stay connected to each other. So that was really, really good and really important. Um, so the next thing was that it's time for a change um, and that this is our chance and this is my activism thing. <laughs> um, and I found it really strange, actually, when I went looking for images to go with this slide, it was all like a lot of chance gambling and a very philosophical thought pop into my head that there's, there's no gambling in midwifery. Gam midwifery is a sure thing. Midwives will always be there. Midwives will always be there providing 
normality and comfort and a hand to hold and a glucose tablet and <laughs> something to keep you going. And I think we do that for families and we do that for women in labour a lot, but we can forget to do it for ourselves and for each other. So let's not do that anymore. Um, looking back on what we've done in this pandemic is, is really important. It's really important to keep celebrating midwives, keep celebrating all of the key workers, all of the frontliners, and you know, recognise that don't make them pay for college. Um, <laughs> because in Ireland, we um, are, are just to slide it in. Our, our college system of, of grants is different. Um, we pay either a student contribution, which is a lot less than tuition you, you pay, as far as I know. Um, and sometimes we don't pay that. I'm very lucky to get a grant and we don't ever have to pay that back. Not all, but the majority of our college students don't leave in debt. And I think that's really important, especially for healthcare professionals um, and healthcare students to not leave with that burden. But that's another activist thing for another day. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is our chance to reflect and look back and see what did we do right? Um, what did we do less right? And what changed that we thought we couldn't change before? Um, why did we think we couldn't change it before? And what do we need to do to change other things that we thought were impossible um, in practice and in education? Because online learning, tricky as it has been, is brilliant. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And I know it's given a bit of flexibility to people that would have struggled with the nine to five of college before. Um, so I think these are all questions to ask, even if not questions to get the answers to. Um, but things to consider and chat about. Um, and then things in practice like home birth. I think we had a little bit of a spike in home birth inquiries. Um, and especially in Ireland where home birth just isn't accessible. That, that's a really important conversation to have. Um, and what what happened with our MLU in, in Cavan. My, my college is one of the only with access to the MLU and it's quite the point to my college because they're wonderful and to examine why we haven't got more and um, why two countries that are so geographically close and demographically close have such a difference in the way we provide care um, those are important conversations to have um, and yeah, just to kind of not not forget the amazing things we did during this time. Um, midwives, student midwives, everyone. Um, think about the way we adapted, the way we celebrated each other, the way other people celebrated us. It, it, we did amazing things. We should be proud as much as we remember what didn't go well and what was lost and who was lost um, because everyone is lost someone. Um, and I think students and new graduates looking at jobs this year, we need to make sure that those are still there next year and the year after that and the year after that and all the years after that as well and make sure we don't lose all of the great work we did. Um, so have courage and be kind. I went looking for this because this was the title of my, my COVID cohort, um, Courage, Kindness and Understanding. And... I just, I think it's one of the most sum up things of midwifery. It's courage and kindness is everywhere, but especially in midwifery. Um, and it's important. And I've seen it, I think the same midwifery era two weeks ago, Leslie Page said something about courage, kindness and respect. <laughs> um, and I found an OCM piece with the most beautiful summing up of both of these things. But I'm going to hopefully appear on screen now. So courage is about acting in accordance with our beliefs, particularly in the face of criticism. And I just thought that was nice. I thought it summed up the philosophy of midwifery in a nice way, a way to kind of hold it with you. Um, and that sometimes courage is just not giving up. 
not giving up when you're tired at the end of a shift or a string of shifts um, or at the end of an exam or an essay when you have a final edit that you really need to do and not submit <laughs> without doing. Um, and it goes hand in hand with the kindness. So it's kindness is being considerate, friendly and generous, um, which midwives are so good at. <laughs> um, and kindness is happens when we demonstrate concern for others. And that's midwifery as well. And I suppose it's important to not just midwife the people we look after, but to midwife each other and to midwife ourselves. Um, so I, I just thought these were really nice. Um, and you just never find courage and kindness in the same way anywhere else than you do with midwives or student midwives or midwife educators um, or midwifery podcasts <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave it with this which I'm going to butcher if I try and pronounce um, it's a saying I kind of clung to in the last couple of weeks if there's no strength without unity um, and I think that my activist brain and my midwife brain come together. Um, we can't do any of it alone. We couldn't get through a pandemic alone. We have to rely on each other. Um, we don't get to our degree alone. We rely on our lecturers and our classmates and Google um, and textbooks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, we need to remember together and talk together about what we've done what we did right, what we didn't do right, um, remember what we lost and move forward together. So that's <laughs> That was great, Laura. That was absolutely fantastic. I love your last two slides because I think that those really sum up the importance of what you do as a midwife. The courage bit and the kindness bit are so integral and it's also, I think, what you've highlighted is not just the courage to do things, but to be courageous and kind to yourself. Because I think we, sh we need to be self-critical, um, and we often are very self-critical. We also need to balance that with kindness. So I always say it's about making sure you do the Skinner sandwich, the kind, the nice, nasty, nice. Because that's the way you, you should look after yourself as well as others when you're giving feedback so we've had some really fantastic thoughts and some fantastic stories and perspectives from our student midwives and and it's been I think one of the things I've found about doing these weeks these hours of these weeks has been it's been quite positive at very difficult time you'd expect it to be very difficult and negative but there's so much that's positive and the sort of things that, like the creativity of students coming out with their OSCE videos and, and, and making sure that they can work around their families so they get up when the families are all in bed so they can do their studying and so they can work very much together. And the unity, I love the unity as well because I think sometimes we can be not so united and we do need to be together because it really shows over this this period we need to be together to get through it but normal life and normal care of looking after mothers and babies and their families also needs our all of our support and our attention i was sort of thinking about um some of the challenges we have in providing there's a lot of focus about labor and there has been in the uh, kind of recommendations and guidelines that have come through and and something came out in Twitter from um, Jackie Dunkley Bent this morning about postnatal care and I think it's really important that we remember the mothers this is only the beginning for them and we're, we're there right at the beginning to really put them on that road with their little baby but it's quite scary for them as well just as it is for us doing the, doing all the things that we're doing now I have the, the delight of having some questions. Um, I will say thanks again to Matflix for the video content and also our partners, the Practicing Midwife Journal and All Four Maternity for their online resources, which Alicia has, has highlighted how they can be used. The fantastic resources we have 
for everybody. And and we now have a little bit of time for, for some questions and discussion. And I have uh, a question for, they always have to come through, uh, Jane Marshall, who would like to know, what advice would you give to students about to start their midwifery course at this at this time? And we'll start that with maybe Alicia. Give Laura a bit of a break. <laughs> Um, my advice would be to breathe. <laughs> okay. I can imagine that you're panicking a little bit because this isn't what you expected. Nobody expected this to happen. But in a way, you're benefiting from coming into it a few months down the line. You're not coming into it in March or April. We've had time to put things in place and everything that will be happening has been very well considered okay um just breathe and enjoy it when you do get there we really want you the world really wants you we're very happy to have you and thank you so much for not running the other way like, <laughs> really very grateful for that um you'll be fine yeah i think jane was wondering if it would if you know some and i've seen this on uh, one of the the chats chats facebook chats is uh, some people are saying, should we defer, maybe come in later? What do you think, Laura? Defer? Or yeah, I come defer in now? myself, so I'm a bit biased. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I always tell people to follow their instincts um, because you know you best. You know your situation best. You know pretty, pretty well what's good for you. Um, so if something, if you have a doubt in your head telling you to defer, do a pros and cons list and then consider your instincts as well. Um, because it isn't an easy decision. Um, I remember having to decide did I want to defer or not and that was tough and that was just normal life stuff. There was no pandemic kind of weighing on me at that stage. So yeah, just breathe, <laughs> be kind to yourself, write a list and trust yourself um, because your instinct is going to guide you for the rest of your career and for the rest of your life. So trust yourself. Uh, did you want to add anything, Alicia? Or um, are you still breathing? <laughs> uh, what my university has done is they held a webinar for um, students that are starting in September. Oh, fab. Um, so they got to submit their questions. Their questions are things like, so if there's no face-to-face -face learning, what will my learning look like? Um, so that was explained. Things like, what book should I buy? And the issue of deferral did come up because for my advice for if for people that are starting in September, as Laura said, use your instinct, but also you need to find out from your university whether, what, when are they looking to put you into practice? Because if you're, for example, if you need to secure, like I'm living in a hotel because I, I've had to move out so that I could return to practice. You need to find out if you need to do things like that. You have, you have to take that into consideration and also take into consideration factors that make, make you vulnerable. Are you able to go into practice at this time? What is put in place for students that aren't? What does the university recommend if you are a person that isn't able to opt in at this, at this time? Just be very honest and open and you, the university will be open with you. Yes, yeah, that's fantastic. That's a wonderful reply. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have Lola Atiko Arnato. Hi ladies, thank you for your presentations and well done for all your hard work. I'm a midwife who's passionate about promoting normality and also education. For the past 12 years, I've worked part-time to sit around my family, but I have several hours a day where I feel I could be more used. How could midwives like myself support student midwives further? Now, who shall I? How about starting with Alicia this time? You're already ticking. <laughs> I feel very well supported, like super well supported. Um, oh, here's something. If you do have to, if this opt-in situation is still happening um, further down the line, induction now is online so you don't have to go somewhere and sit down all day and go through 
the induction process. So that's a good thing. Um, how can we be further supported? You guys are doing a really good job, to be quite honest. But um, you could come and check on us. So if you can look at which students are on shift and then just pop in and say, hello, how are you doing? How's it going? Um, because I feel like at this time, the emphasis, our emphasis is very much on the women and the babies. And we just, it's already a stressful situation. We don't want to make a fuss. So if we are having a bit of a wobble, we're more likely to um, keep our mouths closed and just struggle through. So maybe if you were to just come and say, how is it going? You may find that you may find a few tears. You may find um, you may find people that need a bit more support, but they wouldn't have told you otherwise. But as it, generally, oh, I'm just so impressed. We're so okay. awesome. All of us, we're just so amazing. You're doing a great job. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> How about Laura? Do you have the similar sort of ideas? That's a, I mean, yeah. that's a really good idea because it, it, sometimes midwives are so busy, it, you know, having someone just wafting by just to say how things, that's a really good one. Yeah, no, it is. It's brilliant. Um, and it's much in the same vein, I think, of what I was going to say, which is, just, just ask us, um, just ask how we're doing, sit with us on a, on a break and have a cup of tea and a biscuit or whatever it is and ask us how we're getting on. But as well as that, on your day off, relax, um, mind yourself before you can mind someone. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, Brie and Alicia both like, what's the last thing? Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like sit back and because you can't, you can't mind yourself if you're flat out look. You can't mind anyone else if you're flat out looking after everyone else. Um, you have to mind yourself. And because I'm horrendous for not having a work life balance, worry about the work stuff when you're in work. Worry about the work stuff on the way in on the car or on the bus or whatever it is. Um, enjoy your days off because if you if you take that time, it makes you a much better person when you get to work and much more relaxed and much more able to see if someone is, is struggling a little bit and much more able to hear those struggles. I think. Um, so, yeah. So these are wonderful bits of advice. So we've got breathing, we've got looking after yourself properly, having your time off, and then having a, a cup of tea. This is a good midwife one. And then being able to have a little, a little just check-in chat. That's fantastic. Thank you. Now, I've got... This is Becky Bagnall who says, I feel the support and appreciation for student midwives has actually improved during this time. We received a full trust induction as now as now an employee, even though this is looking to be cut short. There's a little little sad face there. The induction was brilliant and we should have had this in the first year. I'm a second year and although I'm very anxious about the coming months and what's going to happen, I feel very supported by uni and my trust. So that's not a question, that's just a kind of comment, which is grand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Becky, and good luck with your course. Um, now we have Sarah, and I think we had a slight discussion of this last time you were here. Sarah says, for Laura, do we know if many student midwives with nursing qualifications have been called back into frontline nursing? Because midwives will tend to be kept in midwifery but in ireland i don't i haven't heard of any of that happening um i think our protections for students are quite good um like another thing is that we don't we don't work on sociable errors as students um so i think our postgraduate students have been quite well kept because they are classified as students they are employees but they're in that same kind of gray area as interns very possibly wrong I just haven't heard of any um I know there's been other redeployments like our national women's and infant health program got redeployed back to the clinical area um but I think our postgrads have been safe enough okay okay how about Alicia have you heard anything because I think before you had some there had been some students there were some um, students, some postgraduate students that were worried that um, they almost felt guilty about remaining as student midwives and that because as qualified nurses, they were able to give drugs and IVs and things like that. And some of them had specialist um, ICU training. 
but um, one of the videos actually is from a student that's on the postgraduate course and she's remained as a student midwife because I think as hard as it is for us opting out and opting in, for them, I think going back to work as a nurse and then coming back, it's, it's similarly confusing. Mm -hmm. So I hope none of you feel guilty or bad about deciding to stick with the midwifery course that you're on. It's tough. I don't think I could do the postgraduate course. I think, no. So you're to be applauded for your efforts. Fabulous. Okay, thank you very much. I've got one uh, last one. Laura Davis says, do we know what proportion of midwifery students have been called onto the frontline service or have been held in limbo? I'm not sure if we'd have that data. You might have a, a touch of it, Alicia, yeah. in your work. One of, one of the links that, um, so first years in England anyway, have mm -hmm. been, they're doing 100% um, online learning Second years and third years are the ones that have, have their opt-in, opt-out decision. For first years, it hasn't really been much of a decision. But one of the um, resources that I've given Sue to add to the resources list, it does have, um, of course, nursing and midwifery, they're amalgamated. So it's hard to tell um, the, the number of student midwives that have been called to the front line or, or working on the front line. But there is a bit of data there, in one of those links, the um, Health Education England one. Fabulous. Well, that's really helpful. I don't know if Laura had anything to add, because I think you've, you've already kind of commented on that, I think. Yeah, I think ours would be harder again to, to try and list, because we either have the interns that are employees, um, whoever doesn't have to cocoon, and I think you call it shielding, we call it cocooning, um, whoever doesn't have to cocoon continues to go to work as normal, and then everyone else either stayed home with online learning or did that on HCA work. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where to look for it, to be honest. <laughs> That's part of the learning, isn't it? Yeah. Where, where to get the, the information <laughs> from. Just, uh, okay, well, that's fantastic. I, think, I don't think we have any more time for any more questions, um, but I know that those of you who are tip-tapping away on your live Facebook, um, we'll be able to answer some questions online a bit later. There's always a little bit of a day, delay, but we'll do our best to our, our answer what we can. Um, and I just want to say a really huge thank you to our two special guests, Alicia Burnett and Laura Henry, for their contribution to the evening's discussions. Really fantastic and really very heartwarming to know that student midwives are still there and they're lively and they're together. And they're looking after each other, but they're looking after their colleagues and their mentors. Because I can see, you know, Laura saying, have your day off <laughs> so you can come back fresh. That's fantastic. Um, resources will be available on the website after this and on Facebook on Friday. Um, next week, there is no maternity and midwifery hour because we're having a bumper Day on the 23rd of June with, with, with an all-day festival with some fantastic speakers all day. So you can either come for the whole day and really top up your CPD folder or you can come in and go. But I think once you come in, you'll want to stay for the whole thing. I hope so anyway. Uh, and the next maternity hour will be changing times with COVID-19, ensuring women's choices. And that will be with the lovely Lucia Rocco in, I can, can never say her second name, Ihenakcho, and also supporting women's cho choices with Sheena Byron that you also saw this evening on the July the 1st. So pop that in your diary and we'll look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, do stay safe. And well, look after yourselves and your loved ones, and we'll see you soon. Take care and thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.